gamers, we got another tournament update. And this week we have played against Demu in round of eight. Game number one was Dele versus Mongol. I was not super happy about this matchup. Remember last week how I said, um, when I, or not last week, week before, I think, when I played against Zerton and I got Fre uh, JD versus Byzantine, I was like, well, I'm going to lose, but if I win, that's going to be a really, really good for me, right? So we played Delhi versus Mongol, and uh, this matchup is very, very good for Delhi. Now, I got a couple of different tricks for this matchup to do to try to get a W. And, uh, well, I did one, and it, and it, and it worked. Um, so, I actually drove my TC pretty far away. My TC spawned, like, here. And I drove it all the way there to cover the gold, cover the wood line. My Uvu was exposed, but it's fine. So, whenever you play Delhi, by the way, or Mongol versus Delhi, you always want to tower their wood line. So, if the bears were here, that would be perfect. You put a tower there. But you tower their wood line. You don't need to tower their gold or stone, because they're always going to have either enough gold or they're not going to care about making a prelate. So you always want to... And berries, like Delhi players will always collect them, right? So they're collect like three basically by the time you come. So you should tower the wood line. So here we start with a little tower, already slowly transitioning. Uh, he deleted the mining camp, which is, you know, pretty common at the top level so that I wouldn't destroy it and get the boonty or um, pillage, whatever the hell it's called. Um, I could attack the landmark from here, which is kind of funny. I wouldn't be able to kill it, but I could, like, put some dent into it. But I was like, I don't want to risk him pulling villagers and killing my villagers. So let's just, let's just, let's just fucking chill for a moment. Um. So. Um, we got the tower up. So this is all, like. This is something that you need to establish as Mongol to even have a chance to win. I tried doing a double tower. And it would have worked, but it actually pulled villagers on me. So that's why I had to cancel. Um, so now I'm making a second tower. And I, I body blocked the villager. So you can see the villagers right there. And I put the spearman on hold position on top of it so you can't click it. Because he literally can't click it now. Um... But then he pulls villagers, and the tower was close to completing, and I was, like, debating, like, do I cancel, do I not? Because I could have finished it, caused some idle time, but the tower would have gone down, and I would maybe even lose the villager, and maybe spearman. And if I lose a spearman, this tower can go down, too. So I was like, um, that's a lot of villagers, so I was like, fuck it, let's just cancel. I mean, that was 18 villagers. It was basically, I mean, 18 out of 20 villagers were pulled, so I was like, okay, I caused some idle time. Kind of worked out. Let's end with that. So then I got this tower right here. Obviously, it's in range of the uh, wood line. I just need Khan to come here. And I need to upgrade it. So usually when you go for this, the uh, Delhi player has to go archers. If they don't go archers, then you can just keep towering them. So they have to go archers. Like if you didn't make archer range, I could just tower here, then here, then here. And yeah. So instead, because this got blocked, I decided to tower in the back over here on the berries so that I cause some problems here, maybe kill a villager or two uh, later on. So I just I use this wood from here to there. There's going Ghazis, which again is pretty normal. I'm scouting. I do the... And... One villager goes down. And then another one goes down. I actually didn't see this. I think this one, maybe? Yeah, this villager right here, just a little bit too close. And he gets bopped because I have vision from the hawk, eagle, whatever the fuck it is. So I was like, I, I thought I killed one villager there. I only saw it later on, there was two. So at this point, this is a great start. And I think he had some idle time when he pulled the villagers. Because uh, when he pulled the villagers to kill my tower, or I'm not maybe at another point, I actually didn't pay attention now either. Because Mongol is usually one villager behind, because you have to put down the um, 
the TC. So while the TC is moving, you lose a villager, basically. But not only I'm, I'm you know, not two villagers ahead because I killed two, but I'm actually four villagers uh, ahead. And I should be only one villager ahead, right? If my math serves me correct. So there was something happening there. I'm not sure. Uh, I got a tower here. And then I sent it back. And I was like, oh, well, let me keep cooking with this villager. Because he doesn't know it's here. So then I sent the villager around next to the uh, edge of the map. To try and make a tower here. Because I was like, that's good value. Both deer camps. Uh, are here i can cover it with a tower so i know when he's going on the outside food sources i'm getting my upgrades i got six on gold and i am not going trade but i'm going double stable so i'm going double stable and i know right now he has no spearman and i know that he's going for keshik archer so if i or sorry uh, gazi raider archer so i know that if i just keep making keshiks i can potentially have some good trades i'm getting plus one range armor in a second and uh, now I know that his wood line is here. So basically what I want is for him to expose his villagers so I can actually raid him. He goes for capture. The sacred cells were a bit weirdly spawned. Like usually this site is like here. But because they were so close together and he had bigger army, I couldn't contest. So I just had to let him... Um, I just had to let him get the sacred sites. But I couldn't really do much else. So here I tried decamping. I sent one Kashi here. My villager made a tower. I'm upgrading it now. He goes for the tower here. And uh, I kill one Gazi Raider. I kill a scout, which is pretty nice. And because his whole army is here, I managed to get some raid in. Um, for some idle time. A lot of idle time, actually. And now he wasn't chopping wood for quite a bit there. I get more idle time, so... Pretty good. I lost the tower, but I killed Gazi, Scout, and I forced some idol. Um, and now this is the time um, where he should be close to running out of food, so he has to go out. And I have this covered, if you look at my vision. Like, I have a very, very, I have very, very good vision. So the only thing he can go is here, where I wasn't. But if you look at his vision, it's pretty scary, right? Like, you don't, he doesn't know where my army is. He knows now, but I mean in general, right? So here, I'm just trying to do a harassment, trying to cause some more idle time. Which he is moving his villagers, so it's working out. And now he's opting for barracks, because I think he notices there's a shit ton of Keshiks right now. So he goes for barracks. I get behind here. Now this was a bit risky, as I, and I wasn't sure if this is the right move. So right now, I could have gone out. But I was close to age up, so I was going castle here. I got a lot of gold, I got a lot of pastures. So I'm close to aging up. And uh, I was like, I could run away, but then he could dive me, or, or he can harass me or attack me while I'm aging up. So I decided to go around this tower. And um, it gave me, obviously, movement speed on my Kashyx. So I got a charge here, and then I just kind of ran out. And he didn't kill this tower, which is pretty important. Again, some more idle time. And this doesn't seem like much, but it's a lot of idling of just running around. So he opts to chase me, because he did kill a few Keshiks. But I still have 13. I think that's how many I had. 13, 14? I'm not sure. Now, what I just missed to show you is I raided here with 2, 3 Keshiks. And I went from, I think it was 2 workers killed to now 8. And the reason why... Uh, he didn't see it is because the moment where we're about to engage in here I sent the Keshix in because I knew that his uh, woodworkers are here so I knew that he might not pay attention and as I was micring here as we were fighting as I was running as I was harassing here his wood villagers were dying and now the difference in villagers is getting quite bad um, like 46 versus 35 is quite good for me and he doesn't have sacred sites so he goes here, I bait him into the tower, and he sees the age up, so he decides to go for a dive. I defend here on the tower, and I actually clean all this up. I think he loses everything here, which was pretty nice for me. Now he goes for a dive here, and he's killing some villagers. But I knew that his eco is pretty bad because of all the raids, of all the harassment and stuff. 
So I was like, okay, even if I lose some villagers, I killed some as well. And, uh, like, I should be fine, kind of thing. And now I'm producing men at arms, by the way. So I wasn't like, oh shit, I'm dead, kind of thing. It's just like, okay, as long as I don't take massive damage, I'll be fine. This gets cleaned up. He vacuums these barriers because he's got 24 villagers, right? He's causing some idle time. I'm mining out the gold. I got plenty of gold to build Kashyx and stuff, so and, and men at arms, so I'm not too worried. He's going for the sacred sites, and now he goes for the back, back berries. And this is, again, uh, like, from his POV, there's a lot of stuff happening, right? Like, people, people ask me, like, why do people make, like, simple mistakes at the top level sometimes, or, like, make mistakes against you? Like, a lot of stuff is happening. Like, he's attacking here, he's actively micring the archers, he's getting the sacred sites, right? He's got armies moving out. And he didn't pay attention to this. So, he saw that there's a tower, he killed the tower, one villager was lost, and then he just A-moved his villagers, right? Into the tower. And I don't think he either saw or realized that there's a Kashyyyk inside with decent amount of health. And this Kashyyyk is uh, castle upgraded, and he ends up killing like few more villagers there. Now on this side, it looks like he's preventing gold gathering, but again, I had 1k gold because I vacuumed everything from here, so I don't actually need gold. Like, I'm more than fine just staying here. And this Kashyyyk is still going, by the way. I think it's killed 4 villagers plus tower killed 1. So now I have 1, even though he was attacking me the whole time, I got 1 Kashyyyk out to go raid there again. Because the moment that I saw villagers here, I sent another Kashyyyk all the way around, because I knew this was walled, or, well, I guess it wasn't. So as I'm pushing him back here, I have a Springle Tower here, which is pretty annoying, it's kind of in between the sacred sites. Another Kashyyyk arrives here, I think it was AFK a bit. And then this is all his food gathering, by the way. And I knew this, right? Because I know that he got berries here. I, I knew he's got no sheep. So again, this is not idling. He has no food income, like zero. He's fighting my men at arms here. And I'm, I shouldn't be doing this because I'm just trading them inefficiently. But I'm gathering food and he's not. So it's like, even if I'm trading inefficient, it's still fine. I'm not trying to get relics or anything. I'm just making units right now. I get two towers, one of them is Springle in a second, and now I'm defending here. Now, this might look like not good to just leave your Khan here, but it doesn't really matter because Khan has a lot of HP in the castle. So if he tanks like three, four volleys from all these archers, that's fine. Because he's free, right? He's gonna respawn. And now, the Keshik is still here, by the way, doing work. And now he comes to the deer, but there is a tower which he has not scouted. This gets repelled. I target fire all the spearmen so that he can torch the tower. Both towers will have sprinkles in a second. And this tower is now doing work. Kashik arrives. And again, full idle on the eco. I send this Kashik, I think, over here. And I send another Kashik to replace that one. Meanwhile, my men at arms are just like chasing the units around and even though army supply looks kind of bad it's, it's really not that big of a deal. You can see the resources per minute are a lot better for me um, So yeah So there's a man at arm here now and this kind of just snowballs and he taps out so I felt pretty good about after that game because like I said, I, I don't think Mongols should win there. It's usually a very, very difficult matchup. But I was very happy that I did. So um, starting off, I was like, again, like like I played against Zerton, JD versus Byzantine. I was like, okay, well, if I lose, it is like, it's not a big deal. I'm not supposed to win it. But if I win, that's a really good start. So yeah. Now game two was on moving out and it was Japanese versus Rus. And oh boy. I failed this game. Uh, you're gonna see so much failing in one game for me that it's crazy. And the funniest thing, the way the game starts, is something that I haven't had so far in my AoE 
for history. So I get the transport, I'm killing the deer for the bounty. And uh, yeah, it starts off normal, nothing crazy. This is the game I lost, by the way, I lost pretty badly. So he's chopping wood, he's chilling. I'm aging up. I get transformation on the galley. And uh, I got four fishing ships, which are more like eight, like, you know, ten ish normal civ fishing ships, so. It's pretty good. Because you don't have to return resources. I get my hunty wooden fortress here in a good spot, because I also get the vision from it, right? So it's pretty nice for the water. And I get the uh, bonus of the thing. I went Golden Gate, because. Uh, if you go Rus here and you go Golden Gate, you actually don't need um, you actually don't need to mine gold at all. You can just um, you can just sell wood or food or whatever and, and get gold that way. So we're building docks. I killed uh, two fishing ships, which was a pretty good start for me. Worker count is equal, but again, that's pretty good for me. I'm harassing here, which again, pretty good for me. Uh, I'm attacking here, and this is where the funny shit starts. So, at a point, I don't know when exactly, I saw this shinobi in the wood forest, or like this, and I thought it's a villager. So this is what happened. I made a wall here, and then I saw the dog once the wall finished. Or... Maybe I saw it earlier, but I actually saw it when the wall finished. So I thought I trapped this villager inside. So I thought this is a villager. Because, like, look, if I'm here and I see this, I, you know, you can't tell it's a shinobi. And I'm not going to click on it, right? For some reason, I even saw this, right? But for some reason, it didn't click at all that shinobi is coming. So... I didn't even see that villager dying, because we were micring over here, and I was getting good trades. I killed two more fishing ships, so I was like, yo, I'm fucking destroying this game. So, at this point, I think it was at this point, yeah, I see this. Look, look, see, this is what I'm seeing. So I'm like, man, I lost a fucking villager to a villager, so I pulled three villagers to kill the enemy villager, because I thought it's a villager. And I go went back to micring my shit. So my villagers come out. And at one point, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? And I'm like, oh my fucking god, that's Shinobi. This is what I realized. And I'm like, oh my fucking god. So I lost five, oh, four villagers to one Shinobi. And I was just like, bro, what the fuck am I doing? And I was like, oh my... And then I... The thing is, at that time, I thought I lost more. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? And that threw me off completely. Like, that thing there threw me off completely. Because, looking at this, right? It's not good for me, but... It's like, I killed some fishing ships, so it's still okay. But that shit threw me off, and I was like, holy fuck. And I was like, man, how many villagers did I even lose? So anyway... The game goes on, and uh, I think this was the fastest chop through I have ever seen in my life. So watch this. Um, so I've played, obviously I've played this map quite a bit, I've practiced. The water fights were, I would say even trades for most of it. Now he got a lot of value with the arrow slits over time. Because he got arrow slits here and here, and he was just kind of like waiting on both sides and fighting. So I always fought against arrow slits, and I couldn't really kill the dogs, and yada yada. But, out of all my games, I think this was the fastest chop through that I've had. Because, he builds a tower already here. Right? And I actually didn't fucking see... Because, you know when you're like, looking at this way, to explain in simple terms... Like, you're expecting a night at like 5, 5.30 in your game, so on the land map. 
And imagine one game the knight arrives at 3.30. Like you're not paying attention to your gold villagers because the knight doesn't arrive that fast, right? So on this map, the wood gets chopped a bit later. So I, I wasn't even considering or paying attention to this shit. <clears throat> so he has nine worker kills. That's something to remember. So very quickly, I just start bleeding villagers here because I don't fucking see it. I didn't pay attention to it. And there's pings on the map all the time. Like there's a ping here, there's a ping there. You know. I think it was here or on the next chop through. And I'm doing decently well on water. Not amazing, but okay, I'm holding on. I'm building a wooden fortress. I'm like preparing for the uh, chop through. And look at this. Nine villagers killed. Well, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and I'm just like, oh my god. And I knew I lost a lot of villagers, look at this, I lose even more here. I think I killed 3 total, and I lost, what, 11? Or was it 8 or 9? 10. So I was like, fuck me, that's not good. And. Both this and the shinobi thing threw me off so fucking much. I started like giga potatoing on the water. Like I started miss micring a lot. Like just losing shit left and right. And uh, he micro the ships well and I just, I ran into like two demos I think. At some points. Um, <clears throat> but if you look at his income compared to mine, I have like 1.7. And he has like 2.4k income or something. So here, I, I'm slowly starting to like get choked out, you know. I'm losing on this side. I'm losing, I lost this side because I don't have a dock anymore. I get a couple of villager kills here. But the problem is he kind of has control of the both sides and, and I, I don't, right? Also, I don't know what even gave vision here, by the way. Like, what is giving vision here? Is it the chop through here? Look at this. Like this? I thought it's the dock giving vision here, by the way. Because I was like, I don't know how this makes sense. Look at this. So I lose more villagers there. Kick W. Look at that. That tower is just farming, brother. Like, look at my minimap, it's just, or his minimap. Like, everything is just pinging all the time. So, yep. And uh, all in all, uh, yeah, he starts aging up. I try to go for a giga push to try end, but, um, you know, there's arrow slits, like, fucking everywhere at this point. And um, if you get to these large, large numbers with ships, uh, Rus is not that good because of the demo ships being so big. And I'll chop through here now so I'll get fucked there even more. So he ages up and yeah, he got the military upgrade for the extra HP. I do the final push. The only way I could have maybe extended this game if I got some like fucking sick shots. Like if I sunk in like 10 uh, Springle ships or something but... Didn't quite work out, he micro well, and uh, I ended up losing the game. So yeah, that game, I was just like, fuck. Like, the shinobi thing just, just got me. That was pretty funny. I wonder if he saw it, and he's like, what the fuck is he doing? I wonder if he thought, like, oh, he thinks it's a villager kind of thing. So next game, I picked, uh, he picked this map. After Dry Raven, he picked that map we just played, and then I picked Archipelago. He didn't have the best water sieves. Now French has actually yeah. seen play. If you were a rogue player, you would have won that game. Raptor strike. Thank you, Shukat. Appreciate it. True, true and real. So, um, French has actually been played. French and JD people are playing them on water because, um, if you guys don't know, their ships are uh, different cost. So. Uh, French and JD Warcog, they're unique ships. They have plus one ranged armor and they cost 75 food. So you can actually sustain your um, ships on water quite a bit longer with less fishing ships and you produce villagers faster 
right? Like at a few at least 17 seconds per villager. So you're actually getting, uh, you don't have any straight up economic advantage in terms of like, you know, China drops off more resources, OTD has faster gathering rates, but you do have more villagers. So over time, it's actually, you build up more villagers, so you have higher uh, eco count over time, so it kind of equals out. And early on, you your uh, ships are cheaper on food. So more and more people have been playing with them, so it's more common to see them. Now, I wasn't... Someone asked me if I was worried, like, to play Archipelago after um, the last map, because they're both pretty much water maps. I was like, I mean, you know, I kind of lost the moving out, not because of water fights. I lost them because I'm fucking dented, right? So this game, I, you know, I picked Archipelago, and I knew he's going to play French, or I can't remember what else he had. So I was like, I got Order of the Dragon, you know, I'm fine with it. So here I'm going for the age up. His age up is a bit delayed compared to mine. He went for double dock quite a bit earlier uh, than I did. So he had um, more fishing ships. I think I had nine total. And uh, he has nine, but he's still producing, right? So that's why his age up is delayed. So he's, he's higher eco, but slower age up. So now he's aging up with eight. So he pulled even more and Gal is already on the way I scouted where he was and this is like you're causing some idle time you know you're doing some damage so uh, it's really nice um, I poke this I don't really do too much he just moves them a bit but because of idle time on fishing which is actually quite big because if you have idle time on fishing it can be quite bad um, in order to produce your ships with most sieves but I guess with French not so much because you can see how much food he still has so I went super aggro on this map. I knew that he uh, most likely has more fishing ships. So I didn't want him to build up that advantage. So I just I just went all out. I just went full aggro. I got three Springles versus two. We do some micring over here. Boom, boom, boom. Demo arrives. I get the galley. And now this is kind of game ending right here. If you kill the galley and the demo ship goes through... And it lands a hit on one of the Springles. You kill the Springle ship and the galley, so it's really, really good. So I end up killing that. Hope it is molding. Um, I get another demo in, and my galley is chasing the fishing ships. And at this point, I killed seven fishing ships total. So this is a very, very good start for me. He gets a demo, I get a demo, but you can see the army. Uh, I'm just constantly producing. And this is where his fishing eco is idle, straight up. So he does not... I don't know if he bought food at any point, because he has a chamber of commerce. But he's got five fishing ships, and he's not producing anything. Oh, I think he just bought food, right? Yeah, he bought food here. A lot of people actually were wondering why he went to chamber of commerce. Uh, because, you know, you can't trade on this map. But this French or JD, you get free traders based on upgrades. Uh, you could go School of Cavalry, but School of Cavalry is a pretty big investment. If you make a knight or two, then you also need to make a transport ship. And while that's cool and all, that's a lot of resources you're investing for harassment. Um, and the reason you go Chambers, obviously uh, Chamber of Commerce, obviously the traders are useless. Uh, but you can use it to buy or sell food or, or wood or whatever else. So you have some usage out of it. So, yeah. Like, I think the idea of making knights and then harassing is like one of those, it's cool, but it's very unrealistic at the top level. Because if you make two knights on a transport ship, the enemy is going to have like two Springle ships extra. And then you get fucked on water, so... <clears throat> Unless you can sneak them in before the opponent realizes and then they attack too late or something So we got a demo right here. I saw that they missed this in the cast um, So I push from here and I push with demo from here Wait, was it this one? Maybe it was later actually No, it was later so I'm pushing here and I kind of realize I'm having like a bad angle here because I'm pushing into nothing. So this push was, I think, pretty not bad for me, but it 
Like, I have more ships, so it should be very good for me. But it wasn't that good. Oh yeah, here it is. So I decide to push on this side instead. He's running away from demos, he's micring, and then demo from this side hits, and I get a quad hit with that demo. And that kind of hit is pretty much game ending, unless I get hit by it as well. And now, I'm like, okay, let's fucking, let's just go around, and let's push on to the fishing. I think I killed this. Yeah. He's got a lot of demos. I'm pre-spreading my Springle ships, because I'm like, I just don't want to throw the game now, you know? Because if I get hit, you know, you can maybe equalize the game or something. He's got demos right here coming. And actually, it looked really, really bad, but he only got two ships there. Like, it could have potentially been way worse for me, because I might hurt badly there. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's, just, let's just chill a bit. Let's regroup. And I was like, let's go around. Because that's where he's fishing is, so... I end up doing a push here. And, um... The demos pop off, and the fishing eco is gone, so... He taps out. Because at this point, once all the fishing eco is lost, he's gonna lose the docks, and then, um... I'll just start water trading. So next game, he picked Woodwall. Basically, we played Archipelago, Dry Arabia, and Moving Out. So there was four lakes and wood wall remaining. So these were the sieves, right? So basically, four lakes. I'm definitely going to be picking English, and he probably knows that. Um, and then for four lakes, he has Abbasid, which I think is a pretty good matchup for me. So he probably didn't want to play that and preferred to play the other one first, which because he has Byzantines, right? Which is uh, obviously a very good sieve. So I kind of had the choice, do I pick Ottomar or do I pick Malian? And um, I went with the, um, I went with Malian and I actually wasn't, so when I was thinking what to pick, I wasn't sure about this matchup because honestly, I don't remember if I played it a lot. I don't know why even because they're both played on the same maps like Dry Arabia or like Lipani or stuff like that. But I just, I, did, I couldn't recall if I had any games recently. And I was like, I don't even know what the meta is in this matchup. So, it started off pretty straightforward, standard stuff. And I was trying to be like super scout uh, active because I wasn't sure what Byzantine does in this matchup. And I wasn't really sure what I do in this matchup. So, my approach was let's just play like a reactive game and try to cow boom, you know, while I do that. So you'll see my scout go here like a million times. Like I keep rechecking what he's doing. And actually here I see barracks very early. So I was like, okay. So I was just kind of like, okay, I don't know how to play this matchup. Okay, he's making barracks. I can't make sofa or... I don't want to make sofa or like scouts upgraded, right? So I was like, okay, let's not do that. So I was like... Thinking what mercenaries could he go and I was like well he could go like before a game I was like he's probably not gonna go Keshek because Keshek against Malin is pretty ass So I thought he's gonna go longbow or javelin throwers and um, I knew obviously both are possibility, but I wasn't sure what he's gonna go for and when I saw limit to Nate, I knew it's gonna be one of those like guaranteed Because if he went for uh, Horses he could only go for longbows or Keshiks, but again, Keshiks are not very good in this matchup. So I was like, okay, well, I see the, um, what are they called? I see the, you know, limit NA is going to be coming. So I was like, let's just make an archer range. And that's what I did. I was like, I just don't want to play super greedy and, and die to the Byzantine push because it's very strong. So I played it very, very safe. I went archers immediately. And I went for this big gold, uh, which... Maybe it was greedy, but I thought I could hold it. So Archer is coming out. I do finish the pit mine, so I'm getting some gold already. And he and I see with my scout again. I'm constantly check, checking here to see if there's horses or something else. And uh, I see that the mercenary house is just now being built. I see that he's not rushing castle, so I just keep making archers and. In a little bit, I'll start making javelin throwers. I don't 
I don't know if I scouted the stable, but I didn't know about it in the game. I think I go home here. Or do I? Actually, I'm not sure. But, um... He's making javelins and he's making horsemen. Yeah, I went home here, so I didn't know about the horsemen. So right now, I am on triple archer range, getting the blacksmith. And my comp is just archer javelins. Because I was like, well, if he goes limited A plus longbow or javelins, I just make archers for limited A and I'll just make um, javelins for whatever ranger he's making. I was still a bit worried to go here because if you look at this, the way these two forests spawned, I couldn't fucking see like if he has units here. So I bring my scout to get some vision. And he's going for a pit mine. So I target fire on the javelins. And I try to get a fight in here. He runs away and I'm like, okay, let's not let's not chase too much. Let's just chill, let's repair that shit. <clears throat> and then I see horsemen and I was like, oh fuck. I was like, fuck, 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 run, run, run. Because I didn't know how many are coming and I see two already, right? So I immediately dropped down two barracks to produce Donzos and I was like, well, I guess this is rip because I can't really do much about it. But what's good in all of this is um, I was cow booming behind this. So if I committed full army, I would have beaten this army uh, probably a lot easier. Uh, but because I was cow booming behind it while trying to defend this, I end up losing this, which uh, he loses the scout, by the way, which I didn't think was a big deal. Obviously, it's not good, but I still have six houses. Again, I'm cow booming, so I'm in okay spot. I see a lot of units coming here. I'm making more donzos, and I'm like, okay, if I just, you know, just calm down, just uh, stabilize a little bit. I will have more javelins because he cannot outmatch me in javelin production, right? Because he produces them from oil and I'm producing them with, um, you know, I can produce as many as I want. He walled this side. He's going on the second berries. And because I saw so many horsemen and limited A, I knew that he's probably not aging up to castle because he's committing a lot of food to making units and i was fine with it honestly like javelin uh, uh byzantine is a pain to fight for most civs in feudal but because we kind of have same units like we both have javelins i didn't mind just staying in feudal and fighting because again i have cows too so here we trade out and maybe it looks like really really bad for me but i killed quite a few javelins and i lowered the horseman count which was thank you which was very nice for me so from here on out, I'm still pumping units. I remade the uh, pit mine. And again, it kind of looks bad, but it's not that bad. I'm chopping wood. I'm making units. Uh, I lost one worker. And now my cow boom is almost done. I made 18 cows, 20 cows. Boom, we're done. So cow boom is completed. And now what I wanted to do is I wanted to age up. I was worried here that he is aging up because he just pulled back, right? And uh, he's harassing here and I see the age up and I'm like, okay, that's fine because I'm close to the age up too. And Malian, I don't know if you guys know, but Malian upgrades are faster than other civs for the veterancy. So I was like, that's fine. We're gonna age up. I try to do a little poke here. And I actually saw that he doesn't have, I think I saw that, yeah, I saw that he doesn't have farms because that's one thing I was worried about. I was like, if he has full farming and we're in this spot, that's going to be a very big problem for me because then he has done his cow booming too. But when I saw he only has four farms, I was like, okay, he is probably on these berries because I knew that this was walled. And that's why I started rallying units to break this, to push him off these berries. And obviously he doesn't have access to these because we're both here. So I go back. I'm making um, transitioning to Archer Musafati. Because I was like, okay, he's gonna make probably not the uh, probably not more cavalry, but he's gonna make Varangian guards, uh, javelins, and maybe archers or crossbows, whatever. So I was like, let's just go Musafati Archer and some javelins too. So I push in, and I see that he does not have uh, the thing here. And I was like, oh, 
I was a bit surprised there. We have a fight here, but I already have veteran upgrades and everything except the safaris. And again, this is the thing. Because I am making javelins, I'm sniping his, but because I have archers and Musafaris, he wants to kill with his archers, my Musafari and archers, right? But his javelins want to kill my archers uh, too. Because if he kills my javelins, he doesn't get too much value because my javelins only counter his javelins pretty much. So he kept target firing, we kept target firing each other's units. And when the dust settled, I thought I was losing, and then I moved back, and I was like, wait, I have a lot of units here. I have a lot more than he. So, I got my upgrades, my food income is looking good, his food income is looking pretty bad at this point. He's transitioning to berries, and some people might wonder, why is he making berries here, right? He never makes that mistake, why is he making them here and not here? That's because... There's a lot of micring happening. I'm pushing on this side. There's like upgrades coming in, timings are coming in. He's trying to get relics. And when you play more chill games, I guarantee you he goes like poop, 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 puts down the farms and he's good. But this was probably like, oh shit, I'm out of food. And he just went put down the farms and he's going next. Um. So here, I have a counter push, and one thing about Malian is while Byzantines at this point can kind of pump units consistently pretty much, and have a good matchup into every sit, Malians, you cannot outmass them in Castle Age in this specific scenario. Look at this. Gate was almost down, and then my Musafari started doing this. Uh, so when I was in here, and again I see no farms, I was like, okay, I'm in a very good spot. I just need to not throw this. Uh, did some my cream on the javelins. I, I'm about to have poison arrows. I kind of have a poor trade here, but because I don't have poison arrows yet. I'm trying to idle his eco. The camel riders come out of the, I assume, golden horn tower. I sent some stealth and musu bodies around. And if you look at the unit count and like the eco, I have way, way, way more eco. Musafaris arrive here. Idle time. And again, Malin is just, you know, you're non-stop printing. You're not, you're not going to end up anytime soon. Uh, when I destroyed these like walls that he had, I just built a, like a, like a dig through it so he can re-wall. I have Musafaris in the top left killing these guys. Uh, I actually moved command here into his army, but at this point it felt like it didn't matter because I just have more eco going, right? Musafaris are coming in for another run by, and even though he has javelins, again, he, he doesn't have enough. He, you know, he can't match them. And uh, another thing is, um, so I didn't point this out earlier, but he started making um, Vrengengar javelin crossbow. And then, I don't know if he was expecting me to go sofas. But because he had Camel Rider Wing, I wasn't gonna go sofas. So, he had a lot of crossbows that didn't really do much. And in the end, he taps out. And Byzantine gets defeated. I have some thoughts regarding some of the sieves that I'm gonna... You know, once, once I finish my, my participation in tournament, I will give my opinion on some of the sieves, some of the stuff I figured out, and some of the matchups uh, in the game. But obviously, I can't talk too in depth about like strategy and stuff. Most of the stuff I'm talking about what I did in the game, but I'm not gonna speak up on like sieves and all that. With that being said, spoilers. Uh, this is the bracket for the playoffs. So, other results. Uh, Marine Lord beat B3 to 0. It was uh, not a very good series, um, is the nicest way I can put it. It's pretty bad, actually, quality wise. Wham versus Vortex was very much, you know, this guy wins, that guy wins. But Vortex ended up winning 3 to 2. I beat Demo 3 to 1, and then Lucifer beat Poppy Paul 3 to 1. Now, to surprise of me, and many, I think, I thought that Spanish bros are gonna get- I'm not gonna lie, I thought they're gonna get wrecked. 
I thought it might be a 3-0-3-1 kind of, kind of games. Uh, because basically we had Canadian bros versus Spanish bros. But I guess Spanish bros have been cooking and they're back. And um, another funny thing that happened since the last video, the decider matches were done too. And a lot of, of these like, uh, you know, new blood, we call them new blood, but it's like have, they've been playing for a while, but they haven't been top eight players. So Louis actually fell out in group stage. A lot of these guys were actually supposed to advance but they ended up not so for example louis beat demu three to one in the first match and these are gsl group formats so it's basically like winner winner versus loser loser then marine lord beat louis 3-0 and then demu knocked out cat and basically the decider match was demu versus louis where demu won louis three to one and then louis did not get into that top eight which i think a lot of people expected then in my group Kiliardi beat B3-2, but then in the decider match, they played again and B beat Kiliardi 3-2. So again, you could have had a situation where B and Demu were not in top 8. Same thing, by the way, happened in group C. I don't know if you guys can see because of my uh, thing here. I'll zoom out a bit. Same thing happened. Uh, Vortex lost to Anathan 3-0 in the first match. Poppy Pop beat Anderton 3-2. He was he was actually 2-0 up against Poppy Pop. He almost advanced straight away. And then in the decider match, Anderton lost to Vortex 3-0. So again, we could have had Anderton, Kilardi, Louis in top 8. And then in the last match, I guess the person that should have advanced did advance, which was Lucifron. Lucifron and Wham. But these three groups, kind of unfortunate. Kind of unfortunate. Yeah, it was all mirror results. That's true. It was 3 1 1 3 2 3 uh 3 2 or 3 2 2 3 whatever you want to call it and then 3 0 0 3 so that's kind of interesting but <clears throat> uh the funny thing is we're like two two and a half years into you know two and a half years almost three into a four and the top eight was something that we've been seeing for the past <clears throat> probably two years or a year and a half year i don't know and it was marine lord b wayne vortex me demo pop point luciferon and an even weirder or funnier or interesting thing is that the top four is the same top four that most of AOE4 has had. Uh, so not every tournament is this top four, but most of the tournaments, this was the top four. And it was Marine Lord, Vortex, me, and Lucifron. So we have the chimps, the chimp brothers playing against the Spanish brothers. And we'll see what happens. Uh, the, we're entering best of sevens, which I'm pretty excited to play in because I, I love best of sevens. So it should be a fun match playing on June 22nd, both of these matches. So we'll see. The winner gets 9,000 real duelers. Second, four and a half. Third, 2.6. Fourth, one seven. So I'm going to try to win it, baby. That's it. That's the analysis for this week. I'll do another one next week, whether I win the tournament or lose it. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. By the way, check out Beastie Cutie Gaming and Beastie Cutie Clips on YouTube. Thank you very much. Twitch gamers, let's keep going.